Morning folks, Andy Truck Davy and the Truck coming to you today from Kinross Services on the M90 where it is a overcast, clammy and 14 degrees. Now I want to start today's show by apologising for something I said on the review of the week on Friday. I watched the show back and I used a term that I haven't used since the mid-1990s when I was an angry young man in Glasgow and I said the word junkie instead of drug addict. And for that I apologise. I will keep an eye on how I do things in the future. I'm not, I'm not a professional presenter as you know. I just wing this for my truck. But on reviewing that programme on Friday, sometimes as you all know I go into a rant and when a day, when I'm in the rant, the angry young man that used to run about Glasgow in the 1990s and looking around about him and seeing the drug epidemic and the poverty and that that was there at the time before devolution, then, you know, sometimes that happens. So I apologise if I offended anybody on Friday with that rant. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. It's a review of the weekend time, but we'll start, as we always do, with the coronavirus update, okay? And these are the figures for the 14th of the 6th, 2020. Okay, tested in Scotland's NHS, 137,638, and that was a plus of 1,492 from Saturday to Sunday. All right, tested positive over the piece since the epidemic hit in Scotland, uh, is 15,755, and that's an increase of 25. Um... Bit of variation there on the on the transmission rate or the amount of people being infected um, or detected as being infected. Um, anyway, active cases, 575, and that's doing seven. And deaths, these are in hospital who have been confirmed with a COVID-19 test. Uh, it's 2,448, and that's a plus one. But as we know, deaths at the weekend are slow to filter through because you can't register a death on, at the weekend. All right. So to figure tomorrow will probably be a bit higher. Um, combined deaths in the community, care homes and in hospitals for the whole of Scotland is 4,033. Bloody sore number. Bloody sore number. All right. Let's move on now to the review of the weekend and we'll start with Friday, right? Because obviously when I do the review of the week, I don't, don't have much there for Friday. It's early in the morning. So Friday the 12th, okay. Michael Gove announces to the public it'll be a hard Brexit. Something we all knew anyway, right? But the First Ministers of Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales had already asked for this extension because of the COVID-19 situation. They were not informed of what Michael Gove was going to say, and as a consequence of that, they pulled out of the joint talks, which were supposed to take place between Number 10 and the devolved administrations on Friday evening. Okay, so basically, Taff, Jock and Paddy's been told to shut up and get back in your box. Right, what Taff, Jock and Paddy, the colonies want, has got no interest, there is no interest whatsoever in what the Scots, the Northern Irish, or the Welsh want in Westminster. What England wants is what the rest is get, whether we like it or bloody well not. Also on Friday, it's revealed that, that the Brexit that was sold to the public is not the Brexit that anybody's getting, right? Because immigration and uh, borders are just going to be left open for 12 months at least, right? So, all the refugees out in France who have been trying to get into the UK, it's open season. There's going to be light touch borders, right? It means contraband and people are going to flow across the channel and flow through all the ports into the UK. So, the Brexit that the idiots in England voted for, they're not getting it. There will be no border controls. There will be 
so-called light touch border controls. That means that the black market is coming to town. That means people trafficking is coming to town. That is not the Brexit that the people in England voted for. And Wales, sorry, people in England and Wales voted for, primarily. They're also not getting that trade deal that they were told they were going to get. So there's going to be hundreds and hundreds, thousands of small businesses are going to get out of business and mass unemployment is on the cards. Now, the crossing between Dover Cali and the Euro Tunnel handles 10,000 trucks a day. Right? That's just to bring in food and other equipment. Aye, Duncan, I'll be in the first city shortly myself. I'm heading for the, the Almond Vale Industrial Park. A, no, the aye. The Inver Almond Industrial Park, sorry, Duncan. Anyway, so, the borders. There's no new infrastructure being built at Dover or at, a, at, at Folkestone. Um, what they're proposing is to put lorry parks in for these light dots checks 20 miles up the road. People are just going to ignore them and just plow on through. So there'll be no light touch uh, checks either. This is a failing of the UK government to hire and train 50,000 customs officers. Since the Brexit vote in 2016, the European Union and the coastal uh, the coastal countries of, of the European Union have all been putting infrastructure in place, right? And they are not going to give uh, vehicles leaving the UK light touch um, customs controls. They've got the lorry parks sorted out. They've got green and orange lanes sorted out. Green lane goes straight through. That's the rain people coming back. Orange lane is for trucks from the UK heading into Europe, they will go into customs checks. Nothing like that exists here. All right. So Brexit is going to be an absolute disaster. And the, those uh, xenophobic idiots in England that voted for it are going to see people trafficking and people smuggling going through the roof. Mass unemployment's coming. So... That's just the way it's going to be. Right. Speculation on how long Boris Johnson's going to last starts to hit the papers. Speculation has it that after uh, Cummins gets his hard Brexit through, Bojo will be off the scene. He'll be gone. Right. Also on Friday, it's revealed that England's chief nursing officer was a told to sling her hook and wouldn't be on any mayor of the UK government briefings on COVID-19 because she wouldn't back up the, the, the Cummins story. She wouldn't say that he was right to travel and she wouldn't say it was alright for him to drive with dodgy eyesight. So she was told to go away. Also on Friday it's reported that the UK government knows fine well that the R rate is starting to rise in England's regions. And that in some of the regions, the R rate, the transmission rate for COVID-19, is over one. And that's the point at which they said they would shut back down again. But they haven't they shut back down again. Right? So the UK government, I'm on a poll, uh, uh, with the UK government, what they did was they sent that idiot Matt Hancock out on Friday to say, I forget the R number, just go about your business. Meanwhile in Scotland and Wales, both FM's First Ministers continue with a cautious approach. Scotland and Wales will be forced to follow suit, follow England, eh, um, because most of the big retailers that are about to open up in England are all headquartered in England and they will tell their retail parks, their retail outlets in Scotland to open up. So we're going to have to be very careful here and we're going to have to hope that the First Minister and the Health and Safety Executive will go shut them all back down again and remind them that we have a different legal system and a different Health and Safety Executive. 
Right. Also, Friday, UK will not participate in any EU fast track vac vaccination system that's uh, put in place. Go to remember when it comes to your vaccine, depending on where it's where it's uh, actually invented, it will be gone to market, and the biggest blocks, the biggest trading blocks, they will be able to buy up these uh, va the vaccine quicker than anybody else. Sheer volume of numbers, and they are you know. And that, that will be um, more viable for, for big drugs companies. So if you've got a market of 500 million buying as a block, you're going to get the sales. Whereas the 65 million here in the UK, unless the vaccine is invented here, well, we'll just need to sit in the line, same as everybody else. Same as all the other smaller nations that are outside any trading blocks. Right. Finally, and just for a wee bit of comedy, on Friday, the English far right demand that all statues of the Prophet Muhammad be taken down. Thick as mince, Tommy Robertson and his mob didn't know that there are no effigies or statues of Muhammad. Idiots. No real. No, the Muslim religion just, they just don't do it. They don't have any images, and the few images that are out there have been out there for about hundreds and hundreds of years. But the Muslims don't use icons the way the, the Christian church does. There is no images of Muhammad in every temple, the way there is images of Christ in every temple. You know, and finally, on Friday, some of these gammons went and damaged the uh, statue of King Robert at Bannockburn. What did King Robert know about racism? You know, anyway, what committee it was, a history lesson. Knew these gammons know that King Robert wasn't a bloody racist. Moving on to Saturday the 13th. All right. EU makes it clear it won't reciprocate on light touch customs for vehicles leaving the UK and entering into the single market. There will be tight custom controls and it's going to take days and days and days to get goods for the UK into the EU. Also Saturday, the UK government to let the people decide if they want to buy inferior goods from uh, inferior foods from America, i.e. coronated chicken. So the government, the UK government's policy on these inferior foods from America is just to let the people decide. But here's the thing, and I spoke about this last week. In their trade negotiations, they have said that there will be no requirement for geographical indicators on any products coming into the UK. That means when this inferior food store hits the shelves in supermarkets, we won't know where it's from. There'll be no geographical indicators on it to, say, indicate um, the bread basket of America. And people will buy on price, so there'll be poor people that won't be buying this inferior food for America because it's all they'll be able to bloody well afford. Outrageous. And on Saturday, the Telegraph reports return of the bailiffs. The banks know that the, the loans that they've gied out um, during this pandemic will not be paid back. Come on, sweetheart. Aye, nice to see you watching. Um, that's the wife watching, so better watch what I'm saying. So, they know they're not getting this money back. So the high street banks are going out and they're hiring outsourced bailiff companies at an amazing rate of knots. You know, the average team that the banks are sourcing is 250 people a team. They're expecting mass defaults on loans, mortgages, the lot. So the banks are out hiring bailiffs to go and repossess people's belongings to try and get some of the money back before they then go to the UK government and say, well, you've guaranteed these loans. Where's the rest of my money? Because this is all we've been able to... That's all we've been able to get for the people. Because let's face it, 
Um, when the when the do they think there's a crash? The new when the Brexit hat crash really hits, you know there'll be reproduction. There will be um, repossessions, people losing their homes and out of their possessions. The bank will want what they want back, and the UK government will expect the banks to take everything that a person's got to minimise the amount that they're going to go to the taxpayer for. So, the bailiffs are back. It's an outrage. Tory Housing, Housing, Tory Housing Minister is facing inquiry into illegally signing off a new housing development. Robert uh, Jenrick signed off on a one billion housing project on the Isle of Dogs in London. The scheme... Um, the scheme's financed by Tory donor Richard Desmond. Hackney Council had already said, no, you can't go ahead with that development. There's no social housing, there's no nothing, no rented housing in it. So this is going to be high-end housing. Um, the housing uh, minister called, in, called it in and granted planning permission illegally. There's going to be an inquiry into that. So that's going to be an interesting one to watch. Also on Saturday... About 150 um, fat middle-aged gammons from the Loyalist Defence League showed up in George Square to defend the war memorial. Nobody quite knows what they were defending it from because in the First and Second World War there was peoples of all religions, all colours and all creeds fighting in that war, in the wars. So who the hell... Um, these these hundred and fifty idiots, right wing idiots for this loyal loyalist defence league. Who the hell they were supposed to be be um, defending this say, the war memorial, the cenotaph in Glasgow from is not quite clear. All right. Uh, Angus B McNeil, SNP MP for the for the islands, writes to the energy minister to get the paperwork uh, released on the new round of uh, wind turbines that are going ahead on the 4th because he wants to see where in the SSC supply chain or why it is the SSC have outsourced all this work when there's yards on the 4th that could have done a fair bit of that work. So Angus McNeil has written to the Energy Minister a quasi quartes or quarteng to find out to get the, get the contracts released, get the paperwork released to be find out what the hell's going on here, why this work is being passed out of Scotland when it could be done here in Scotland. Um, right, on to Sunday. The chemical giants, BASF, get two billion of public money from the Bank of England COVID Corporate Finance Fund. Although BASF has a healthy balance sheet, and intends to pay huge dividends to shareholders, it will take the money anyway. Right? The Bank of England a corporate, a COVID corporate a finance fund has got 300, two, between 2 and 300 billion that the Bank of England is going to make available to some of the biggest companies and the richest billionaires in the world. I don't know why the Bank of England is using public money or creating money to support these businesses, because they've already got plenty. And if they wanted more, they could go on to the banks. Interest rates are at an all-time low. Right. So the public purse is financing and supporting huge multinationals which have got plenty of money and don't really need any public support. Right. Also, on Sunday, it becomes clear why Cummings is so important and must remain in number 10. He's there to ensure a hard Brexit. Right? Um, Mr Cummings, who is financed by huge hedge funds, right, is there to ensure that these hedge funds make billions, <coughs> sorry, trillions out of Brexit. These hedge funds and the Tories who have all, are all uh, shareholders, have bet billions against the UK economy. They have bet that the UK economy is going to bomb, 
and they stand to make billions out of the UK economy bombing. They don't care about mass unemployment. They don't care about starvation. They don't care about poverty. But that's what Cummins is there for, as he reported on Sunday. Now, you can go down my timeline and you'll find that report. Right, it's for talking up Scotland. Right. Um, so, I mean, if we, for example, Cummins helped Jacob Rees-Mogg set up a company called Somerset Asset Management. Somerset Asset Management moved its headquarters to Dublin so they could continue to trade into the EU. Right. Jacob Rees-Mogg's company, Summer Asset Management, stands to make nine billion out of a hard Brexit and the crash of the UK economy. So now we know why Cummins is so important. He's been put there by the hedge funds who own him to ensure that the UK goes belly up. Right. Sunday, Chancellor Rishi Sunak takes to the stage to tell people that it doesn't matter what the scientists say. The ministers will decide if and when social distance and distances have to be reduced, say, from two metres to one metre. So you can expect in England this week at some point to cover some other tragedy that's going on in government, that one of these stooges that are sent out each day to do the UK government's briefing will announce the reduction in social distancing. So, second wave's coming. Um, Richard Horton, also on Sunday, Richard Horton, editor of the Lancet Medical Journal, claims the UK's dismal COVID-19 response is the biggest government and scientific failure for generations. That article's also on my timeline. It is stinging, it is stunning, and he does not hold back, there's no punches, he goes into it in detail, um, what the feelings were, but he, once again, but he's a boffin, so disaster management's no his field, so he doesn't really get right into how this whole island that we're on could have been locked down safely and securely, and lives could have been saved, in fact, no lives really needed to be lost, lost, have a look at New Zealand, right, Finally, on Sunday, car crash is given column inches to claim that the Scottish government should have locked down Scotland earlier in order to save lives. When car crash knows that the Westminster government didn't transfer the power to go to a, for lockdown until the 23rd of March, and Scotland went into lockdown quicker than anywhere else in the UK. But the power to go into lockdown wasn't devolved until the COVID-19 bill went through on the 23rd of March. So car crash was given column inches to lie once again to the people of Scotland. And that's absolutely disgusting. And the editors of these newspapers should be bloody well sued. The Scottish government or some of the people of Scotland should get together and sue the and end after these people for allowing misinformation deliberately to be fed to the Scottish public. On to Monday. Um, as you know, I won't be saying much about Monday's news because it's early in the morning. No many big stories are broken today so far. But the chat on the radio this morning is that Boris Johnson is going to... Um, a He's going to put together a commission to look at inequalities right across the UK and they're in the light of the Black Lives Matters uh, campaign. Now, as you and I and everybody else knows, these commissions go nowhere and do nothing. So, Bojo's just flapping his lid, lips and the situation will not change. All right. And the other thing he was saying was, please don't damage our historical statues, even if they were bloody slave traders and monsters like Winston Churchill. Alright. And the other big thing this morning is schools and the return to schools. Right? And the discussion is about this blended learning that's going to have to take place. Well actually it's not a certainty that it's going to have to be take it's going to have to take place. 
or is it certain at the moment as plans need to be put in place by each local authority because local authorities eh, run education. Now, on the radio this morning, John Swinney is getting attacked left, right and centre for no taking the lead on this. If John Swinney had stepped in to take the lead on it, what would have happened was opposition politicians would be shouting that the Scottish government's re-centralising re education and taking control of education. You know, so it's a hard situation for Mr Swinney. Ideally, all you can do is issue guidance because the government can't directly intervene. Otherwise, they'll be called screaming, Scottish government taking control of, or nationalists taking control of education. You know what I mean? So that's the other big one today. And on the Call K programme, there's been reams of people, mainly for Tory council areas, being allowed to come on and have a, have a go. Well, you know, people, it's as simple as this. Either we want my grandchildren to stay alive or we don't. We're going to have to adapt. But, as I say, it's early yet. There's every chance that by um, the 11th of August that this epidemic could be over. You know, it could be over. It might well peter out. We don't know. You know, the 15th of July will be a telling time because that's when tourists from England will be allowed to flow back into Scotland for their staycations. But we really don't know whether blended learning is going to be necessary in August. What we do know is that the local authorities need to put plans in place. Right? And as I say, John Swinney, the Education Secretary, is getting pelters on this. Right, that's it for a... That's it for uh, Monday, and that's the review of the weekend, as I say. So, I hope you enjoyed the show. Hi, David. Nice to see you watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed the show. As I say, once again, I apologise. When I go into a full rant mode, which I do sometimes, um, I, I, I revert to that wee angry guy who was looking around Glasgow in the mid-1990s and going, Jesus, holy mother and... Fortunately, as the 90s progressed and it became clear that the Scottish Parliament was going to um, open up again, I began to get hope in my life. As I say, I was a very angry young man looking around Glasgow in the mid-1990s. But as I say, as the 90s went on and the Scottish Parliament opened up, and since devolution we have seen our lives and our country improve immeasurably immeasurably. Educations get better. Life chances for our young have got better. All that's out the window now right enough because of the mess that Muppet place down in Westminster's made everything and that includes Brexit. But hey, we still have the escape route of independence if we get if we get uh, through this pandemic, this, this uh, epidemic then we can get back to the business of uh, that's alright Paul I'll catch you later in the week mate. Um we can get back to the business of getting Scotland broken free for that throwback in history that they call the Houses of Commons. All right. Um, let's have a look. Well, folks, I'm not going to have much chance for a chat today because that's my break over. I've got a heavy workload on the day. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as I say, I hope you enjoyed the broadcast. I hope you, I hope you found it informative. Um, I hope you like the stories that I picked too. Now, you just have a nice day, and I'll be back again tomorrow. And uh, I'll try and remember, when I'm making these broadcasts, when I go into a full rant, I'll try and moderate the sort of language that I use, as I say, because the angry young man from the, the mid-1990s sometimes comes out in me again, you know. You just have a nice day. Stay safe. Um, abide by the guidelines. Wash your hands and a uh, social distance and remember social distancing have a nice day and i'll speak to you all tomorrow when hopefully my new mic will have showed up it's supposed to show up on friday but it's no catch you all later